We have Dr. Osaze Iyoa with me. is an economic analyst and is going to be joining us from Canada. Um, Dr. Osaze, can you hear me? Good morning. What are some of the immediate economic impacts of protest on local businesses and um, communities? Yes, um, as we have been told several times that um, protest is a legal is a legal right of every citizen. We know it's enshrined in the UN Charter, even in our constitution. Every citizen has a right to agitate or request for um, issues that they consider as um, as critical to their well-being. And of course, uh, we know these issues have not been, they just did not start today. There were protests in the last administration. In fact, we've been having protests right from several administrations, from Jonathan's administration, the Millennium Park protest to um, Buhari's NSAS and um, this. So it's something that you cannot avoid. Yeah, even in developed countries, so it's not something of it that's peculiar to the third world nations. Even in developed countries, I know France had been protesting for for close to 100 days. Um, the same thing in Taiwan. So in Bangladesh, they've been having protests. So it, it's something that's that it's common to humanity. So I, I, there's really nothing wrong with it, but just that sometimes protests now take takes um, another dimension. You know, when you now have the the violent part of it, as they've always said, the police is supposed to protect protesters, but most times when you now have the violent side of it, that's when it becomes inimical to um, general economic goods and, um, and welfare. So, um, but, but most times there are conspiracy theories that says, oh, sometimes government has a hand in the in the violent side of it too, because you now have pro-government um, protesters clashing with um, the anti-government protesters, and then you have so generally when there is now a fracas, when there is now the violent part of it, we know what the damage could be. It could be inimical to um, um, our our shops small scale industries we saw it in the last instance in lagos we saw chain of of shops burnt down even in benin yeah you have people go to loot warehouses you have people go loot shops um some will tell you oh, it's one politician that kept rice yeah meanwhile it's somebody's warehouse it's somebody's business that has been looted so it's generally on the on the on the micro micro scale it um it 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 has a very terrible effect on people's livelihood. Then on the macro scale too, you know GDP is something that um every country is uh, chasing. And what is GDP? GDP is a an accumulation, a total accumulation of amount of goods, total quantity of goods and services produced or sold in a country in any nation. So by the time you have a protest, it means for the next three, four days, because shop owners are not going to open, manufacturers will most likely not open. Yeah, because you don't want your um in your industry or your shop to be looted. So that will affect GDP. So just one day. It's just that Nigeria does not have very reliable figures. If not, I can I can think that in just one day we'll be running to close to ten million, tens of millions of naira that will be lost just one day of closing shop, manufacturers not working, um, um, traders not selling. So that's that's huge on the economy. If you are losing tens of millions for not carrying out um, manufacturing or economic activities generally, so it has an effect on GDP. And you know, this current administration boasted with wanting to build a one trillion um, Naira economy. So by the time you are losing this, that's that's difficult to to meet. Then on the micro scale, as I said, it has an effect on people's life. There are some people that they have to go out every day before they make they get money to take care of their family. So it means when you close down the literally close down the economic space for a full day, then it, it also affects on the micro scale. So the the effects are uh, 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 anti economic to in such a um, better way yeah
policymakers can do to minimize this economic fallout of protest? What can they do? Oh, of course. Uh, so that's why we've always said that there should be a, a, an immediate response, you know. In fact, I know in the last two weeks, government has been sending, um, they've been trying to talk to traditional rulers, they've been talking to governors, they've been talking to various um, economic agents and people of, um, of, of regard and, and position in the economy to try to talk to the youth. But I thought they could have spent most of those efforts trying to bring it yeah, okay we could say the there was some reaction at uh, the minimum wage was passed within a day or so um yeah some some colorful moves here and there but i think the major aspect of the protest was something that um that could have i, I think it was all around wasteful spending that's what the youth that's what the general request was the general everything centered around wasteful spending the the aircraft the yacht, the SUVs, those were the demands, very, very clearly stated, and so on. The, the, the large scale, the, the large cabinets, and, and all the plenty um, portfolios that comes along with, with it. So it wouldn't have taken 24 hours to make a statement and say, oh, this is our blueprint. Moving forward, we intend to... What happened to the Oronsaye report? Yeah, so these are, these are steps that government could have just made within... Um, within 24 hours. So I, th I think government, I, I, I don't think government does not know what to do. Hmm. These, these, these guys are, are more, they are more knowledgeable than us. Most of them are all traveled. They, they've traveled. Most of them schooled abroad. Our current president schooled abroad. So most of them, they travel, they know what, 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 they, they, what they are supposed to do. So it's, I think it's a, it's a clash between knowing what to do and the will to do it. So, of course, this is a very straightforward answer to your question. Uh -huh. the government should immediately should, should listen to the um, agitation of the youths and make very, very bold statements. Instead of just scratching the surface, going around with um, statements mm -hmm. that are quite, that, that, that don't seem to answer the questions that the youth are asking for. Yeah. Okay, now at least the end bad governance protest sh struck the end um, hunger protest has been put on hold for the now. It's a route are clear, there are soldiers everywhere from Benin, uh, I can tell you that. But um, I need to know because it seems like every time there's a protest, it always tilts towards a riot. Shops are boggled. Even in the UK, I was watching the news on the BBC this morning and I saw they've had two protests back to back and people were looting. So, but what can we do? What strategies can be employed to reduce the risk of property damage and um, vandalism during protests? We have to secure our businesses though. Of course, yes. Just like you said, it's, it's almost like a general... Um, happen even in developed nations it usually comes with because because the, the point is if there's anger the whole the whole the whole motivation for carrying out a protest is anger so um most times protesters fail or think that the way to pass their message is it's just like what they say about in in the local parlance that um you know is the troublesome child that most times you want to answer very quickly most times when you are trying to you you know your children there are there, there are some that you like that you are like oh um he will understand let's let's carry his food and give somebody else but there's the, there's the trouble someone that i said no we don't want to wahala you know so there's just that feeling that the, the best way they can pass their anger is by going um riotous yeah so i don't know it, it's difficult to find a balance between being peaceful because if if it's a peaceful protest and they are just seated in one um, in one space, um, just chanting songs. You you are you are asking yourself, will government give them any year? I remember in Taiwan there was a protest last year that lasted for close to one hundred and twenty days, and there was really no no much attention to it because the people were just seated in one at one spot. They were they were yeah hunger strike and so on. So. There was really no 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 much attention. So maybe you want to also ask yourself when there is no 
riotous party when there is no destruction would government just listen to them if they are just uh, without making a case but i think i think it's the anger behind their behind the agitation that that leads to the protest so that's why we all it, it's it's advisable that government listens to them on time um but we know we know these things always happen in 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 most especially third world nations from the beginning of the protest you almost know that there will be an introduction of military might there will be an introduction of force and then um, almost everybody will go back to their rooms and their houses uh, it's unfortunate protest almost comes with riots so um i don't know it's difficult yeah you can imagine protesting in nigeria for a hundred days now that's scary very scary all right for the most of this protest we already know it will most likely turn towards a, a riot so businesses are going to end up losing money some people will be quite unfortunate to be at the receiving end but now the protest is over what ways would you suggest for them to recover life must go on so your shop has been boggled your warehouse the rice there has been looted as if it was the government that puts it there how would you what would you suggest to for recovery and moving forward yeah it, it has to be um unfortunately um our the banking industry is is um is challenged right now because of um the continuous increase in mpr of our our dscbn um rates have been going high up so the last meeting it was also increased so um, it means that the uh, the option of borrowing from the banks it is not there or it has it, in the last two years it has not been there but uh, lending rate is not not of about 35 percent right now so um i don't know how much an option that is for for businesses because insurance is not something that we are used to mm. in africa it, it's not something that's well spread if not our the insurance companies would have come in at this point but I, I know most of our shops are not insured so it, it, everybody just that's 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 the sad reality people will just have to find find ways either you go to your oidara you go to your cooperatives you go to they just have to find a way and that's very unfortunate a way to raise funds and um, they can't even assess the bank even if the lending rate was that i've only said our most of our businesses are not formal how many of them have because to assess a bank loan you have to have your cac you have to have your tax um your tax statement you have to have your detailed report for the last three years and so on those formal official documents how many of our shops at new Bini or ringwood or Akapaba have all those all those documentation so it makes it difficult for them to even access bank loans and that's why we talk too many times that it's difficult for government policy especially cbn policy to make any inroads you look at countries like um, uk canada most of the developed countries they were having the same inflation problem with nigeria in the last two years but they started increasing NPR, and their inflation figures have come down uk is about two percent now canada is 2.79 us is 2.9 nigeria is still in the region of 35 percent and up here yeah, 35 34 35 percent huh. and that's because our for informal sector is very wide so most of the businesses don't do any business with the bank especially when it comes to lending so if you are increasing npr with the mind that you want to discourage borrowing the businesses are not even coming to the banks in the first place because they don't have those formal documentation cap and so on so it's difficult for the cbn um policy to have any impact so so because they are not doing that most of them go to our informal sources of lending money so i think that's what will happen again Mm, they, they will just have to find an, an alternative to, to surviving, but it's very, it's very pathetic. Yeah, it's can something imagine. that should have not happened in the first Okay, now let's talk a little bit about the protest has been suspended, which is good. Shops are gradually opening, we all can move freely, but I have a strong feeling this is going to be for a very short while. From the speech of the presidents, Nigerian youths are not very satisfied. Hence, the reason why I feel 
if we're not careful, within the next couple of days, we'll be back to the streets and these shops will still be at risk. Lives will still be at risk. What are the economic implications of having repeated protests in short successions? Yeah, I, yeah, I know, I know. Yeah, probably. But when when soldiers get well, the military, the the yeah, get out of the streets, you might have a reawakening of the um, protest. But I, I I really doubt it because uh, we always knew that most times when they bring force into it i don't know nobody wants to lose lo lose their lives so i don't know if there will be real there will be re re reoccurrence of the protest. but just as as you ask the question if it comes up again um shops will also be at risk and again there's really no because the shops are are, are, are first line they are the first to, to, to face the, the the battle line these politicians who you are who who, the, who we the youths are have a problem with they they are out of our reach you, you can't they are well protected how do you how do you get get to meet them so straight to the to your question the answer is simple government should be more pathetic government should be more sensitive in the statements they believe i listen to the release i listen to the statement the broadcast of the president and i was just telling somebody i said there's just every tint of bully in 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 this in this in this um broadcast it, it just sounded like bully more like i know what you want don't tell me what you want i the president i know what you nigerians want this is what you want i've been doing it i've done the reforms on 12 subs they have done the reforms on this that is what is good for you so i will continue to do it and you people should just um should just find a way to yes long term begins the way they always say just that in economics they always say that uh, in the long run, we are all we are all dead. That's what um, um, Kane said. So it's it's short term. People want to look at today. Stop telling us what happens in the long run, because in the long run, everybody is dead and there's nobody at, alive. So um, short term. I I, th I think I think we should have more empathic statements from the from 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 our leaders, especially in Africa. We know what the what the core of these agitations were. It 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 was centered mainly around wasteful spending, around the size of governance, the size of the car. But no mention was made. Nothing was mentioned about those critical issues. The first lady's office, the the this the the amount that is budgeted to the national assembly. Those were the core issues, and there was no single mention of that in the president's statement. What what are you doing with a a hundred million um um aircraft? When when you have Air Force One, you have you have so many so much so many fleets in the in the in the Air Force in the um, Navy uh, um, yeah in the Army and so so even in the presidential fleet there is already an existence of there's there's a large fleet so why so and no mention was made about it so I, I I don't know I don't know if there will be an end to protest yeah because it's it's reciprocal it's when 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 you, when you feel that your government has empathy is sensitive has struck the right notes in you then it's easy for you to buy in but from the statement of the president i couldn't see empathy i couldn't see sensitivity in it i didn't see he didn't address the core issue so it's unfortunate business will also would continue to be at risk um so can, can you we do you ask them to save money for any day probably to save money for for such events because it happens in business they are they are they are, they are unforeseen events and this is one of them. So when it happens, I think um, they should just draw down on their savings and continue with business. It's already tough doing business in Nigeria. To add all this makes it tougher. It's unfortunate. Yeah. During our conversation earlier, you made mention of um, data to um, calculate how much we've lost in the process, but we don't really have reliable data but what ways would you suggest for us to calculate accurately um let's say the economic impacts of protests we need to have it measured quantified so that because we like we like figures maybe when we're talking 
in the future we can say during the entire protest we lost this 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 according to so 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 so, so it's reliable but are there other ways you 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 would suggest for us to measure and quantify the impacts and the loss we acquire during the process yes there, there's no other alternative other than um tax you know and that's why i talked about the fact that most of these our businesses are not registered with cc they are not registered with frs or a state internal revenue service that's the only way you can get data because when you when you submit your um documents for tax at the end of the year there will definitely be because your daily sales how, how do you you calculate your daily sales that's how you get your annual total sales, then you are you, you submit it to the government agency, they calculate your tax. So by that, they have an idea of what your daily sales is. Yes, an average. So if today, on Monday, you sold um, 100,000 Naira, on Tuesday, you sold 90,000 Naira, on Wednesday, you sold 85, on Thursday, you sold 98. So there's an average, at least the government, there's an average that can be worked with. And how do they get that until you submit your 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 annual sales, your annual report generally. Submit your so annual report to your either your accountant or your auditor who now submits it to you file your taxes. That you file your taxes with FRS or a state internal revenue service then. So that's why that's why that's why there's a formal sector that I was talking about. You have your tax clearance the, the most most times when you are going to the bank or when you are going to do any legal transaction, they ask you for your you want to even do any contract with government. For those that I work in a government um, agency, the first thing as a contractor is that you bring your three last previous subsequent uh, previous three years um, tax reports, your audited report for the last three years, your your CAC, your uh, industrial training fund documents, and so on. There are about 17 documents that you submit. So those documents keep track um, because you cannot submit an annual report without the annual report will show your daily sales. So government can I estimate that, oh, this com this um, sh um, shop, a retail shop, sells an average of 85,000 um, naira every day. Oh, this 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 shop work, this shop is in a, a manufacturer, it's a manufacturing um, um, industry. They manufacture toilet roll. Their total daily manufacturer sales, it's um, 150,000 naira. So you now have an idea of what Average sales is in, in is in every industry, the retail industry, the manufacturing industry. Then the government can reliably now work on data and say, oh, if from just one day protest we lose five five million dollars or five million naira every day. So do we want this protest to continue? What is the what shall we what what shall we have to give up from cutting down cost of governance? If cutting cost of governance would give up three million naira and we are to lose 10 million naira every day from its protest the so government weighs both sides and sees which one is um which one should should, should give for the other so it, it just as i said there's really no other way to go about it than data submit formal reports tax reports annual reports and so on so i think there should be more um compliance towards it but it has it also boils down to government too before we let you go, just one final question so you can get on with what you're doing or at least catch on, on some sleep. We know yeah. protests aren't new to the world. Every country has had some protests or the other. I just said earlier that the UK has had two protests back to back and um, immigrants are being very careful at the moment in the UK. If you're walking alone, chances are you'll be mobbed. But are there international uh, implications of protests in international trade and investments? Yeah, yes, we have that because most times in countries like, like the UK that you mentioned, most immigrants have set up businesses. Though I know in some countries there are laws to there are laws to deter immigrants. Okay, it depends on what your status is as an immigrant, actually. There are immigrants who are permanent residents, there are immigrants who are temporary residents, and there are immigrants who are even citizens, yeah. So it, it depends on what the definition is. But 
if we are talking about immigrants generally, those who are on PR, who are permanent residents, if we are not adding them to the category of immigrants, then um, it, 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 it helps because I know in, in most countries, UK, Canada, you have to be a permanent resident in the first place for you to set up a business in um, in those countries. So if, but if it has to do with immigrants generally having a problem, then it means that businesses are at risk. It happened in Ghana one time, I think about two years ago, when they were asking all Nigerians to get out of the country. In South Africa, it has continuously happened. You have Nigerians who have set up big businesses. They have to leave their businesses, leave, uh, and so on. So it affects the business, the economic um, sector in that country. Then for international trade too, of course, international trade is a, is, is a conglomerate. And uh, yes, aggregation of domestic trade. It's my, my production that um, leads to exports for the country is because I produce and the country has excess of it that they can export. So if my domestic production is hampered, it means that I may not even be able to meet the domestic market um, before even talking about having for the international market. So a protest that affects the local, just like in UK, it, businesses have been affected. It means that it's going to affect international trade too because exports will be um, will be restricted. We cannot meet up with our orders. International orders will be cancelled. So it would affect almost. It's it's the the world is global now. So any um happening in the domestic um sector definitely affects the international. So it has implications on international trade too. Simply because my domestic production is what results to exports. So if domestic production is hampered, then Exports definitely will be hampered. Then you'd have um, um, orders that from China, for example, China has a an order with on UK to produce some um, vaccines, for example, and they are not able to produce those vaccines. It means that international orders will be cancelled. It's going to be it's a plethora of issues, so it has very significant impact on international trade. Much, Dr. Osaze, you are, I really do appreciate your time with us this morning. So we're going to conclude our discussion segment. It's obvious that we are losing a whole lot, even though we don't have the statistics to show it. But you can use your tongue to count your teeth. Imagine the shop you shut down for a couple of days and how much you should have sold. But well, you had to let that go because it wasn't safe to have it opened or even your shop that was boggled so it's it's a whole lot of losses and we're hoping the government can be proactive instead of reactive so there was ample time for governments to wade into this conversation while the protest was proposed without even waiting for it to start up before saying we should put it on a, a pause thank you dr saze i wish you a good night and uh, we'll talk some other time Thank you. Have a good day. Good morning.